My name is Gavin Jennings. I'm a shoulder surgeon in Bath, UK. The following presentation discusses the use of the in-space balloon in the treatment of rotator cuff tears. The in-space balloon is a biodegradable subacromial spacer made from polylactic acid and epsilon caprolactone. It can be implanted arthroscopically or fluoroscopically and is said to fully degrade within 12 months of implantation. It works by reducing friction between the humeral head and the acromion and also reproduces the depressor effect on the humeral head which has been lost as a result of cuff failure. These benefits facilitate the progression of the subsequent anterior deltoid rehabilitation program. Active infection, known allergy to the balloon constituents, grade 3 or 4 OA and pseudoparalysis are considered contraindications to its use. Its main indication is in irreparable cuff tears with pain and reduced function. Other indications have been proposed, such as its use above partial or margin convergence repairs, above large but complete repairs, and even above repairs with patch augmentation. Arthroscopic insertion starts with the limited debridement through a lateral portal. A reservoir of normal saline is attached to the inserter and the balloon is inserted through the same portal. The protective sheath is withdrawn and the balloon is fully inflated. Some saline is then withdrawn and the plug inserted. The insert is removed and the arm is taken through range of motion to ensure the balloon is stable. There are a few tips which may help make the technique straightforward. Firstly, ensure the balloon itself and the normal saline are warm to assist the unfurling process. The lateral portal should be made at the zenith of the humeral head, i.e. it may be in a slightly different position than the standard portal. The bribement should be minimal, just enough for the inserter to pass and the balloon to inflate in a superior and central position. Excessive anterior and posterior debridement should be avoided and a subacromal decompression should not be performed. The correct balloon size is determined with a graduated probe. The skin is pinched at the port site, then the measurement is made from the portal to the glenoid face. Then one centimetre is added to this measurement. The small balloon is rarely used and most males seem to need the large. It's important to ensure that the lateral portal is dilated adequately to allow smooth passage of the inserter through the soft tissues and in a straight line over the superior glenoid rim. It's advisable to cycle the arm a few times whilst observing the inflated balloon to ensure stability. This video of a right shoulder view from posterior shows the debridement mainly superior, measurement taken with the skin pinched. Smooth insertion of the balloon without any torque on the inserter and placement at the superior most point of the glenoid. Withdrawal of the inserter and inflation. Recommended guidelines for rehabilitation are provided by InSpace as shown. A temporary loss of function and increase in pain at the 8 to 12 week postoperative period, presumably the point at which the balloon bursts, is often seen. Of the 14,000 in space balloons inserted since 2010, there's been a reported medical adverse rate of less than 0.32%, including infection, balloon migration, severe postoperative pain and most commonly allergic reaction to the implant. There are a number of relatively small studies related to the use of the balloon, but a couple are worthy of particular mention. The first study was a prospective case series from Slovenia and Israel with 20 patients with rotator cuff tears greater than 5 cm. This showed significant improvements in constant score, up 33 points, range of movement, pain and activities of daily living maintained at three years. 
Power took a long time to improve, but improvement was sustained. Here's a graphical representation of the improvements at various time points up to three years. Last year, the five-year results of this cohort were published and the improvements were all maintained. Darren Le et al. look retrospectively at 39 cases with the series being published in arthroscopy in 2017. All patients had an intact subscapularis and the biceps, if intact, was tenotomized. Significant improvements in range of movement were seen with an increase in the constant score of 21. The existing literature is thus not exactly robust and we still have more questions than answers about the uses of the in-space balloon. For example, is a balloon better than simple debridement? Is a balloon better than partial rotator cuff repair? Should balloons be used in addition to massive cuff repairs or augmented repairs? NICE have produced guidance which essentially states that at present evidence for use is limited and thus the in-space balloon should only be used in the context of research. In real terms, this means that the patient outcomes, data and collection and adequate follow-up must be performed. The company also insists that the cases are supported. It's clear that adequately powered randomised control trials are needed. Approval by the National Institute for Health Research is hopefully imminent for a multi-centre study from Warwick Clinical Trials Unit comparing debridement versus balloon plus debridement. This represents a far more robust version of the comparison performed by Agnes Kirscher in 2016. There's also a US study currently recruiting comparing in-space balloon with repair or partial repair of massive cuff tears. And unlike the previous similar US study, it looks as though the recruitment levels will be achieved in time to allow the study to proceed. So in summary, the in-space balloon looks like a very promising option in the sphere of massive rotator cuff tear management, but we have some way to go before we understand its exact indications.